Explorers made this heroic journey over a century ago, but only recently has it found closure. I'm Ray Notgrass, and we'll investigate the Antarctic voyage of the Endurance and its captain, Sir Ernest Shackleton, on today's Exploring History podcast. Welcome to Exploring History with Ray Notgrass, a production of Notgrass History. Around 1900, two great goals that explorers had were to arrive at Earth's North and South Poles. Both of these remote places have ice, snow, and frigid temperatures, but their geography is very different. The North Pole lies in the Arctic Ocean, while the South Pole is on the continent of Antarctica. Many explorers attempted to reach the North and South Poles, In 1909, the American Robert Peary, along with Matthew Henson and four Inuit assistants, Ukwia, Uta, Egingwa, and Siglu, reached the North Pole. Two years later, the Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen and his team reached the South Pole. The British explorer Robert Scott and his team arrived at the South Pole just a few weeks later, but unfortunately, Scott and his entire team perished on the return journey. One of the many men who tried to reach the South Pole was the British explorer Ernest Shackleton. In 1909, Shackleton had been on a team that came within 97 miles of the pole, but they had to turn back for lack of food. After that attempt, Shackleton became a hero in Britain, and he was knighted by the king. Shackleton decided to tackle another South Pole exploration. He decided to cross the entire frozen continent of Antarctica, passing through the South Pole on the way. This would be a journey of 2,000 miles. For two years, Shackleton raised money to finance the expedition. He purchased a ship and christened it the Endurance. The name came from the Shackleton family motto, By Endurance We Conquer. Shackleton gathered supplies and assembled a crew. His crew numbered 26 men. It included scientists, a photographer, and several experienced seamen. Shackleton's expedition was called the British Imperial Transantarctic Expedition. They departed London on August 1, 1914. That very day, however, Germany declared war on Russia as World War I was heating up. It was clear that Britain's involvement in the war was inevitable. As Shackleton was leaving Britain, he stopped long enough to offer his ship and crew in service to his country. But the government replied with a one-word telegram. Proceed. When they were several days out of London in the Atlantic Ocean, Shackleton learned that one of the crew had smuggled a friend on board. Shackleton accepted this stowaway, and the young man eagerly went to work. Thus, there were a total of 28 men on board. The Endurance departed South Georgia Island in the South Atlantic for Antarctica on December 5, 1914. This was the last time the crew would touch land for 497 days, well over one year. The ship crossed the Antarctic Circle on December 30th. They sighted Antarctica on January 10, 1915, but they would never actually set foot on the continent. A few days later, the Endurance became beset in pack ice in the treacherous Weddell Sea, which is part of the Southern Ocean off Antarctica. The wind and water currents packed the ice more and more firmly around the ship. The crew tried to dig, chop, and ram their way through the ice, but they were never able to move more than a few feet. The endurance was stuck. However, the crew had the food and other supplies they needed to survive the Antarctic winter, so they were optimistic that with the return of warmer weather they would be able to proceed. But that did not happen. Starting on May 1st, they endured four months without seeing the sun. Meanwhile, the pack ice strengthened its grip on the endurance. Even though its hull was between two and four feet thick, the ice began to crush it. On October 27, 1915, 
Shackleton gave the order to abandon ship, and the men set up camp on the ice. On November 21st, Shackleton and his crew watched the Endurance sink beneath the ice. What had begun as an expedition to cross Antarctica through the South Pole now became a battle for survival and a race to get home. The men floated on an ice floe for the rest of 1915 until April of 1916 when Elephant Island came into view. The crew entered the three lifeboats that they had saved and sailed across the ocean for seven days. Then they were able to land on Elephant Island. But Elephant Island was uninhabited. They would have to go farther to be rescued. Shackleton then announced that he and five other crewmen would set out in one of the lifeboats. The boat was just 22 and a half feet long. They would sail across the ocean and travel for 800 miles to reach South Georgia Island. This trip of 16 days across stormy seas in a small boat is considered one of the most amazing ocean journeys in history. Shackleton and the five crewmen arrived on the west coast of South Georgia Island on May 10, 1916. Shackleton then determined that he and two crewmen would attempt to walk across the island's glacier-covered interior mountains to reach whaling stations on the east coast. As far as anyone knew, No one had ever accomplished such an overland crossing before, and no maps existed of the interior of the island. This meant that the crew of the Endurance would now be spread out in three different places. Shackleton and the two crewmen walked for 36 hours straight and finally reached Stromness Whaling Station. Meanwhile, the 22 men on Elephant Island had built a hut out of the remaining two lifeboats. This gave them the shelter they needed, but it meant that their only hope was to be rescued by Shackleton and the other crewmen who had left with him. After Shackleton and the other two arrived at the whaling station, they started off on an adventure to rescue the crew in the remaining two locations, the three on the western coast of South Georgia Island and the 22 men on Elephant Island. Of course, none of them had radios or cell phones to know if anyone was still alive. They were able to pick up the men on South Georgia, but ice and storms turned back three attempts to get to Elephant Island. On the second of these attempts, they got within sight of Elephant Island before they had to turn back. Finally, on the fourth attempt, three and a half months after they had reached the whaling station, Shackleton and the rescue ship reached Elephant Island on August 30th, 1916. It was just over two years after they had left London. Amazingly, not one of the 28 men on the Endurance lost his life during this entire adventure. Meanwhile, World War I was raging in Europe. Several of the crewmen on the Endurance enlisted in the British military, and two of them lost their lives in the war. Sir Ernest Shackleton continued to make attempts to reach the South Pole, but he never did. He died in 1922 of heart failure on South Georgia Island at the age of 47 while he was making preparations for another Antarctic journey. Shackleton was buried on South Georgia Island on March 5, 1922. The last surviving crewman on the Endurance died in 1979, having lived long enough to see men walk on the moon. We discussed the voyage of the Endurance in the high school curriculum Exploring World Geography from Knotgrass History. This dramatic story is a great example of human geography. Human geography is the study of how people impact the Earth's geography and how geography affects people. It's a fascinating subject, and it's one we emphasize in Exploring World Geography. People have long wondered about the fate of the ship itself, but were never able to locate it. An attempt in 2019 came close, but the autonomous underwater vehicle, the AUV, that was used on the mission was lost. Finally, on March 5, 2022, exactly 100 years after Shackleton was buried, the Endurance 22 mission located the wreckage of the Endurance 10,000 feet underwater in the Weddell Sea. Underwater photographs show the ship remarkably well-preserved, 
The ship's name, Endurance, is in clear view on the stern. Reflecting later on their desperate attempt to find rescue, Sir Ernest Shackleton wrote, When I look back at those days, I have no doubt that Providence guided us, not only across those snowfields, but across the storm-white sea that separated Elephant Island from our landing place on South Georgia. I know that during that long and racking march of 36 hours over the unnamed mountains and glaciers of South Georgia, it seemed to me often that we were four, not three. I said nothing to my companions on the point, but afterwards Worsley, one of the other men, said to me, Boss, I had a curious feeling on the march that there was another person with us. Crean, the third man, confessed to the same idea. Somehow the thought of the one like a son of man in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego comes to mind. In a poem Shackleton wrote about the expedition of the Endurance, he said, We had seen God in his splendor, heard the text that nature renders. Sir Ernest Shackleton did not accomplish his original goal, but in dealing with the difficulties that occurred during his attempt, he showed remarkable skill, bravery, and leadership. Those are lessons we can still learn today. I'm Ray Notgrass. Thanks for exploring history with me today. This has been Exploring History with Ray Notgrass, a production of Notgrass History. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app, and please leave a rating and review so that we can reach more people with our episodes. If you want to learn about new homeschool resources and opportunities from Notgrass History, you can sign up for our email newsletter at exploringhistorypodcast.com. This program was produced by me, Titus Anderson. Thanks for listening.